In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a 500 microfarad capacitor that is discharging through a 50 kilo ohm resistor. And we're going to be solving for the time constant and using that time constant to find the voltage across the resistor after one time constant and after one minute. And then also talk about two methods about how to solve for current after that one minute has elapsed. So as the capacitor is discharging and the current is flowing around the circuit, um, one plate is losing charge as the other one gains, and that pot potential difference is slowly decaying. So the voltage and the current would experience some sort of decay until they're both eventually zero. Now, we're, what we're going to solve for first is that time constant, which is the product of R and C, our resistance and our capacitance, which we both have. So let's go ahead and plug those in and see what we get. Now, when I plug these into my calculator, I made sure I paid attention to the prefixes. So I have 50 kilo ohms. So I put 50,000 times 500 times 10 to the negative sixth for the micro, and I got 25 seconds. Now, when I want to solve for the voltage across the resistors, I can go ahead and use this formula, which is the voltage with respect to time, where we have the voltage of the capacitor times e to the negative t over tau. So t is the time that has elapsed after the switch is closed or the circuit has been completed. And then tau is a time constant of 25 seconds. So now when we're working out part B, we can go ahead and plug in our values. We have 24 volts as our potential difference across the capacitor times e to the negative first power. The reason why it's the negative first power is because if I'm just doing one time constant as my time, then it's basically tau over tau, which is just negative one. And then when I find the product of those two things, I get 8.83 volts for my potential difference across the capacitor. Now for the next part, it asks for the voltage after one minute. So that's obviously more than 25 seconds. So I should expect a voltage that is significantly less than the 8.83 volts that I just got. So I would plug in the original voltage of the capacitor again, times E to the negative 60 over 25 for our exponent. And then I end up with 2.18 volts across the capacitor. Now for my final step, I'm going to go ahead and find the current after one minute elapses. I'm going to show you how we can solve for that two different ways. And the way that I would choose initially is for sure just using Ohm's law. Current is voltage over resistance at that particular moment in time. So at that particular moment, we know that the voltage across the capacitor is 2.18 volts. The resistance has always been 50 kilo ohms. So remember, when we put that in our calculator, we're going to put in 50,000, and that would leave us with a fairly small current of 44 microamps. Now, we'll definitely choose that way, given the numbers that I have already solved for, because it's just a simple quotient of these two numbers. Um, but if you didn't have those, you can use your formula for the current with respect to time which is I naught times E to the negative T over tau. In that case, you would find the initial current. The initial current would be the initial voltage divided by that resistance. So 24 divided by 50,000 times E to the negative 60 over 25. And that would give you the exact same answer, 44 microamps. So either way you put it, you're basically going to get the same result. You're just going to have to see what you have in the problem and basically just take the most simplistic method. If you can use Ohm's law, definitely go for that. There's a little bit less going on there. Um, but if you only have certain variables to work with where you have to use the current with respect to time, then go ahead and use that formula. So I hope that was helpful in helping you analyze a capacitor that's discharging and finding the time constant, voltage, and current. Thank you for watching and listening.